the Tidy Room Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for May 30th, 2021, 2021. We've got a lot of news from Transformers to some G.I. Joe stuff and some Star Wars. We've also got updates to existing projects that we thought might have been abandoned. We're going to talk about all this coming up. First off, a handful of cool things showing up at Show Z. There's this Alien Attack Toys OPG uh, optional girl M3 version. This looks like an anime girl cosplaying as Optimus Prime from the live action movie. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. $3 deposit. Really don't know what the full price will be. But it comes with a figure, two swords, a shield, a war axe, five faces, ten extra pairs of hands, one extra head, one extra pair of legs, and an extra pair of arms. Uh, bikini and two extra uh, chest pieces. So anyway, that's kind of interesting and it's up at Show Z. Next up we have the APC Toys APC-004 Dark Master Megatron Black Crystal version. This is a transparent clear version of the Megatron from the Prime series and it looks pretty cool. It looks gonna be made all of plastic but uh, it is, you know, plastic that is clear, is kind of delicate, got to be careful with it. It's going to be $52, and it looks like it's going to be up for pre-order for $2 down. And there is the 52 toy Beast Box BB31 Firm Hand, and that thing is going to be $32 with $1 deposit. And it's made of all plastic, it's 4.33 inches tall, and it does transform into a cube. So it's kind of cool if you're keeping up this line and getting all these cubes. And Shozy has Tom and Jerry coming into stock, which I think is interesting. I didn't even know that this was a thing, but it's coming into stock. It's the Sin model Tom and Jerry. Tom is going to be 3.35 inches tall, Jerry. I'm sorry, Tom's 5.5, Jerry's 3.3. So they're... A little bit bigger or smaller, maybe the right in scale with 3.75 inch kind of, but the this interesting kind of take on a classic. So transitioning into some masterpiece news here, I really want to talk about these bugs. They're coming into stock and selling out immediately everywhere they come into stock or are not really into stock. The pre-orders go up and the pre-orders sell out. Now there, there's the silver chested version uh, of the bug for pre-order at Show Z. Forager hasn't gone up yet. Now, Forager hasn't shown up at Show Z. As soon as it does, I'm going to try to jump on it. But uh, it just, I don't know why they're only putting them up one at a time. And very, very slowly, when other places put them up as a set, I do like that you can buy them separate. But I don't like the fact, I, just, I don't even know when they're going up. I was kind of hoping to have a little bit more insight. These are still hard to get. Even though they're getting reissued, they're still really hard to lock down a set. So we've got more pictures of the Moon Studio MS-05 Green Zone, the G1 Saizan, and then the MS-06 Iceland, which is the G1 Sukan. And this is for the train bots, the, originally the design from Zeta. They're moving forward with this, and they're moving forward with it pretty fast. And I still don't have the information yet, and I'd like to know, will we get them all in the same month like the pre-orders say are we going to get one at a time are they going to hit all at the same time will there be a box set for them to be cheaper but still looking at all of these they look pretty good in fact i think this looks better than what zeta had done with the aerial bots in the bot form here they are with the arms and they're going to form the arms the arms look good and i guess you could really extrapolate if you've seen the picture of the combined mode well you should have already known what the arms look like but here they go and I do think it looks pretty good it looks pretty solid as a transforming combiner gestalt style looks great and here they are in their train mode and they will come with the I believe they come with their train tracks and you can put them on their train tracks connect the tracks and all that stuff uh, I believe that's how it's gonna go it's kind of interesting set there and and I'm curious too how many people are gonna display them as trains because it is kind of a big deal that they are the train bots. So we have some pictures of Fans Hobby's MB18 combined mode. Looks pretty cool and this is the gray scale. I actually saw some people do digibashes of this already. Like literally it comes out and somebody did a digibash. Uh, I should have snatched the picture up and shown it but this is the gray scale prototype and what it's going to look like. 
here it is from the back and it, and it does look pretty good and kind of uh, I sort of remember what this looked like with it with the original version of it and this is an improvement and of course it's going to be much bigger or is it going to be much bigger because the, the original one was pretty darn big but it still looks pretty cool looks pretty good and that's what ha fans hobby has going on right now I think really this is kind of the biggest news so far this week with the Generation Toy Foo Fighter putting out the picture that it's moving along. Now we don't see it in bot mode, we don't see combined mode, which I actually think most people are like, hey, what's it gonna look like in combined mode? But it actually is a painted prototype, and that looks good. It's next to their their Devastator, so you can kind of get an idea for scale. So this is a pretty big uh, tr fire truck, so pretty big fire truck. And the other thing about this is that I've recently seen the Generation toy in person, so now I can kind of remember how big that is. So this is actually a pretty large or a pretty long fire truck. And here it is next to another one of the teams. So uh, yeah, it's gonna look good. I actually do like the way this blue fire truck comes out looking. The Foo Fighter looks really good in the alt mode, and that I think it looks better in the alt mode than even some of the other other parts of the team that this is going to go along with so a lot of people are going to be excited a lot of people will be stoked knowing that this project is still underway so prime one studios came out showcasing some of their statues they have coming so they have the prime one studio premium master line war for cybertron optimus prime and it's going to have led effects with different display options this does look really good and it does look spot on to the war for cybertron show and and it is, again, another one of those funny quirks where the show's based off the toy. So now we have high-end premium statues based off of a mainline toy. So kind of interesting how it's going and people love it. And it does look pretty good. Next up, we have the same situation here with their Prime One Studio Premium Masterline War for Cybertron Megatron. And so pretty much all of the same stuff going on with this guy with the lights. And all that and he does look good you know it does look very interesting and it does look way better than the toy even though it's in a roundabout way based off of it and they're showcasing their jet wing optimus prime and this statue here it's gonna be 36 inches tall uh so that's gonna be a pretty pretty big what three foot tall statue i mean a lot of these statues already are pretty big but but that one's gonna be a little bit bigger and of course it's already gonna incorporate those parts that are on there so looks really good and this is a teaser for the upcoming side swipe from the revenge of the fallen so yeah it's not a whole lot about it information height and size and all that stuff but it's it's a teaser pick which is kind of cool we don't get a whole lot of teaser picks anymore so we also have some interesting bust of megatron vinyl bust from x quicks and it's interesting here this is supposed to be representing the pillar of street art and graffiti and he does come with a spray paint can it's a bust and it does look sort of like maybe a little super deformed kind of of the shape of this or the stylization of this and it's interesting it's different it is definitely different and i was thinking it was going to have sort of a shine or sheen to it but it's more of more of a flat almost the cartoonish look going on with it it's going to cost 250 bucks too so we got some more pictures of the Bumblebee Movie Blitzwing uh, model kit by Trumpeteer. They're calling it a smart kit, an easy to assemble smart kit. And it does look pretty good. It's it's very interesting and it's going to be uh, pretty poseable. They do indeed show it alongside with Bumblebee so you can get the size difference. You can see the difference in the scaling of that. And it looks like it's pretty much right in scale and it looks really good. So if you're in to make these model kits, then this might be for you. And we also have the Yolo Park Plamo model kit that is based on the movie Shockwave. So it, this is a teaser pick, and they're not showing you a whole lot with it, and it's kind of a grayscale prototype teaser. I uh, would have liked a little bit more of a teaser than this, but it's what they're giving it. They're showing to us. So the full reveal is going to be at Wonder Fest in Shanghai 2021, coming up in june like 13th to 14th so we're gonna probably see a whole lot more stuff at wonderfest we usually do see quite a bit at wonderfest so looking forward to that hope we have a presence 
from a lot of these third-party companies. Okay, so we've got some interesting stuff getting made in its Prime One Studios new official laser beak and frenzy pass cases. And they're only going to be available in Japan. They're only going to be for sale over there. So unless some of these distributors buy a bunch and redistribute them, uh, us in the U.S., we in the U.S., will not be able to get our hands on these. So it's kind of one of those things. Maybe it's not that great of a thing that they're even making it. I don't know what a pass case is. So I guess I'm not going to be heartbroken, but it's still something people might want. But with a different styles of pass cases and bags and stuff like that, it's kind of interesting that you could get all this Transformer merchandise over there in Japan, but you can't get it pretty much anywhere else. So TFCon will be in Los Angeles next year, 2022, March 11th through the 13th, and going to be kind of exciting. Uh, TFCon is always a lot of fun for the people that go, but it's for the people that don't go, we get to see all the stuff that's coming out and the third party panel is what I'm really hoping for. But I'm kind of hoping to see another third party panel before this. And sort of getting into Legends, I guess we're going to go lower, smaller than Legends, but we have this Jazai Toys making a Shockwave cassette and they've been doing this with a lot of different characters, Prime and Megatron and all of this, but how far are they going to go? It looks like they might just make all of them. Uh, if they could pull off a Shockwave like this, Turning it into a cassette and turning it into a gun, that's pretty impressive. And it looks really good for what it is and what it does. And I'm guessing this will fit in a, as a standard cassette. Uh, this looks pretty cool. And they pulled off quite a bit in the past. So let's just see what all else they can pull off after this guy. So we've got some more pictures of Magic Square's Deadly. This is their Perceptor and he does look pretty good. This is the box art. Here he is in person there and he holds his own he stands on his own with a good looking pictures in hand and these aren't these photoshop pictures or these studio pictures this is just real world and it looks really good one thing that i think is kind of interesting the alt mode so the alt mode does look good and somebody seems to think that you can pull off a lot of the same stuff with magic square sound wave well it's just interesting how you could take the sound wave and sort of do some of the similar things that you can with the Perceptor. I, that's just so cool people think like that. Like, hey, let me think outside the box and make my sound wave do this. That's, that's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. But also the picture of them in bot mode side by side. So they look good. And I have this sound wave. I do like it. But man, this overall, I mean, this Magic Square is killing it. Magic Square Designs looks so much like they're just walking right out of the screen. Iron Factory showing off some more pictures of their EX-49 Void Legion and this is a nice looking Scourge and or Sweep or you have to buy like three of them right? <laughs> That's how it's gonna go and he looks pretty good. He is stylized Iron Factory style. It's the Iron Factory style and it looks pretty good. Here it is in the alt mode it almost looks like a toy attic toy type version in the alt mode there. Still looks interesting and imagine that times three. So New Age is showing off some of their figures of the upcoming Devastator and this is the H29 ROM and the H30 Vine. It's Legend Scale Scavenger and Bone Crusher and they look pretty good. They look okay. And what do you expect in the bot modes? I don't, I don't really expect much out of these figures in the individual bot mode. Uh, the alt modes look pretty interesting, pretty spot on, in my opinion, they look pretty good. Uh, but again, what I care about combiners is what they look like in combined mode. And so these kind of teasers, because we're gonna put them out in pairs, is gonna, you're gonna see a lot of this stuff coming up. But at the end of the day, I just want a nice looking Devastator on the shelf. So we're starting to see some stuff showing up in Australia, so we've got the the Kingdom version of Commander Class Rodimus, and you don't get to see the figure in Commander Class packaging, you just see kind of a closed box image there, and there it is on the shelf. We've seen some packaging and some details before, but it's in the wild, and it might be coming to your country soon. 
Then also in Australia, they're releasing or starting to see the Max Multi Rex. So this is the Megatron repainted, and they got to get as much mileage as they can out of the mold, and they're doing that. And it's already starting to show up. And in the U.S., we're starting to see Rhinox. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty exciting for those Beast Wars collectors out there. Start looking around. So we got in-hand shots of Kingdom Wreck Gar, and this is thanks to Crimzeek Reviews. However, he gets them, I don't care. I'm happy that. He gets them, and we start getting some more information, like seeing the size of this guy and how well he stacks up. So he's going to be a pretty good-sized figure. Yes, for the $30 price point, he's going to be worth it. He looks good. He looks great. I like how he looks, and I like how he scales. He does seem a little bit big for what they've been doing, but for me, I like bigger is better. So, yeah, pretty cool. And here's a real good close-up of the alt mode, and the alt mode does look pretty good. I mean, you can still kind of tell the transformation with it, but yeah, it looks good. And this is a super close-up, real unedited type of a picture. So you get the real world look at it. And, and it's going to work out pretty well. I think it's going to be a pretty good figure. So thanks to Tun Tun, uh, we've got pictures of the Sharktacon. And it's kind of interesting how it seems like every week we get a new figure shows up like super early with Tun Tun or a new one with Crimzee or one of the other ones over there. And it's like not like one gets all three. It's really interesting how it works. But anyway, so looking at this, we've got the Sharktacon next to the Alicon. And the Alicon is a pretty cool looking figure. And so it's kind of like, how does it scale size-wise? Because last one we got was Legends. This is supposed to be a Deluxe. And so let's take a look at the bot mode and how it scales. And how it scales in the bot mode there, that actually looks pretty good. It's a pretty solid side-to-side -side scale, side-by-side -side scale. And these are ones that you'd want to true build. Hopefully they make plenty and they're easy enough to get. So people that want three can get three or want 20 <laughs> can get their hands on 20. All right, we got some in-hand images of Prowl. And Prowl does look pretty good. This is the Earthrise version. And it's a little bit better than the Siege. But not a whole lot better. But I still like it. And I do like seeing this stuff. Uh, like I always say over and over, like Broken Record, but I like the in-hand images a little bit better than the photoshopped ones from Hasbro. So we get to see exactly what it looks like. Here's the alt mode, the car mode. Now, I do like this a whole lot better. I like this car mode a lot better. I have the Siege one, or, or if it was Siege, was it Siege? And it's okay. It's not the greatest one, but it's not horrible. So this looks more like what I'd like to see. So I kind of like it, and we'll probably end up getting even more repaints of this guy. So we got more in-hand pictures of Rhinox, and so we've seen some in-hand pictures last week. I do think the shins look kind of weird, the lower legs, I don't know if there's some way to fix that, and make them a little bit narrower, not so wide, but aside from that, it does look like a pretty good figure. Alt mode looks pretty good and pretty spot on, and the mouth opens, there's some cool stuff in there. You do see some of the robot kibble, and yeah, it's kind of weird to say robot kibble. Robot kibble is shining through there, but that's pretty much exactly what it is, is kind of some robot kibble but it does look pretty good in the group mode here in the group shot you can see that he's bigger than prime smaller than dinobot and that Dinobot. i guess i'm behind the times i just didn't get a dinobot yet so i guess i need to and keep up with this whole pace because by the time rhinox comes out uh it'll probably be hard to get a dinobot right so we got more pictures of the arc the the Titan class arc and it's not really anything that we haven't seen yet so doesn't really seem like something to spend a whole lot of time on but it is interesting to get more pictures I do like more pictures so we're gonna look at these pictures and uh, I do want to point out the way they painted the engines on the alt mode kind of make it look like it reflects the light maybe there's a bit of a metallic to that paint in there but I kind of like how they did that so it's an interesting touch there it's a nice touch I'm glad that they did it on the main line there and I do kind of like all of the pictures that you see on the Teltran one and they didn't have to make that thing transform they chose to do that and then there's the the whole probe that's in there and then the two gold coins gold discs so it's interesting it's cool and it starts to make me wonder what are they gonna make after this so I usually don't talk a whole lot about cyberverse because it's targeting a young, younger demographic than my audience but I do want to say that with this Cyberverse roll and change Optimus Prime, there is something interesting about this because it transforms by rolling it into alt mode. 
and does that sound similar to what we're getting with the higher end version with Robosyn? It does. And I start to wonder how long will the Robosyn technology, how long will it take before that gets into some sort of a mainline on the shelf or on the shelf at retail somehow, some way. And when they have stuff like this, all they got to do is put a couple motors in to make this thing do it on its own and it would turn into this. Still kind of a far cry from a, a G1 and B, a clean look. So there's, there's a lot to be said about what could happen in the future, but it'd be kind of exciting if we could sit the RoboSyn type of technology into a mainline figure. And that's years, if not decades away, but it, it may come. Here's the Bumblebee with the same thing. It's kind of a roll and change and you roll that robot, you roll it into this. Uh, this is the alt mode that it would roll into. And that's pretty cool. So I'm starting to wonder, like, how do you go back from that? Do you, you have to transform it back and then roll it into this mode? So uh, kind of that kind of stuff there. And we already saw automatic transforming uh, Bumblebee and stuff like that in Optimus Primes back in the day. But they literally just stood up. That's really all it was, was they stood up. This is going to have a little bit more to it and be a little more complex. This week we've heard some rumors floating around that there's going to be two new characters. And they're both going to be Target exclusives. So I, I don't know, they, is this Cobra Island? Like, I didn't know this was part of Cobra Island. I guess I gotta go back and uh, look into all that. But anyhow, Dr. Mindbender and Barbecue are rumored to be the next figures that we'll see this summer. So it's like, hey, we're just getting over the frenzy or still in the middle of the frenzy of Major Blood. And then we get Mindbender and Barbecue. And that would be pretty cool. Uh, I actually think they're interesting characters. They're going deeper into the line with Mindbender then I'm, I'm just kind of surprised they're going that deep, that late into the line. But I guess I shouldn't be because they're using a lot of the version 2 and version 3 uh, styles for the, the classified figures. So one more thing about Mindbender is he's supposed to be a deluxe. He's supposed to come with something, maybe a vehicle or maybe a lab or something like that. So they didn't really specify. It's not specified. And this is still sort of rumor and leak, but rumor and leak that hopefully comes true. So we got confirmation of some Star Wars news here, and it looks like the uh, gaming greats should start hitting GameStop soon. Now these are the Vintage Collection, these are not the Black Series, these are the 3.75 inch, and they're pretty much just repaints and a new card of existing figures, and they want to get the most they can out of the mold, and, and they're really just milking it, but the gaming greats line is pretty cool you are getting some figures that you wouldn't have gotten before and with this the repaints i guess it's okay so it turns out this uh target exclusive uh star wars set is actually hard to get i mean you would think with as easy it is to get the gi joes oh wait okay so as hard, as easy as get the he-man uh, oh wait so every target exclusive is hard to get so uh these again are hard to get i got two and I got lucky and got two of them. There's four though. And they're an extra five bucks. So you gotta work harder to get something and it's five dollars more. It's it's a bit of a frustration for collectors. Uh, I know it's kind of frustrating for me. Don't worry, there's more Target exclusives coming. And there's gonna be one called the Star Wars Black Series Lunge. And it's gonna be $25 also. No idea what it character it's gonna be, so. If you have an idea, or if you want to guess just for fun, guess in the comments below. And I guess I want to wrap this up with some Memorial Day sales. This is a, kind of strange though, like I don't think Shozy's really doing their sale for Memorial Day, but it's going to be $8 off $100 or $16 off $200 with the SH8WZ or SH16WZ. And so that's going on now until whenever they decide to end it. But if you're looking to get something now, well, you might as well get a little bit more money off of it, right? And GameStop has a sale. I'm not affiliated with GameStop at all, but the fact that they are now just a really good place to get the action figures that are hard to find, but they're more expensive. They say this weekend, if you were to buy the $5 bag, you get 20% off of all the action figures you buy. So that's pretty cool. That would work. That's, that's a, I guess, a nice sale. Well, you'll have to buy enough things to make it worth spending five bucks on a bag. 
And the problem is, there's probably only one or two things at each different GameStop that you want. So therein lies the challenge, but hey, if you luck out, then you might make a pretty good savings. So let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. It seems pretty light this week, but again, it's still a fun week. There's always fun stuff going on with the Transformers and always some rumors going on with Star Wars and G.I. Joe. It's always like that. I don't know why, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe and to Hanger out.